first nine of the season. And their opponent, the last team in the playoffs in postseason for the first time since 2003, the Kansas City Chiefs with a record of nine and seven. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Indianapolis. Tom Hammond and Chris Collinsworth. It's Bedlam here, as you might hear behind us, ready for this wild card matchup between the Colts and the Chiefs. And Chris, rarely is a game so clearly defined. The Colts have the worst rushing defense in the NFL, while the Chiefs have one of the elite running backs in Larry Johnson. And I hope he got a good week's rest <laughs> this week because they are going to wear him out in this game. A big, physical, bruising fast running back who today is going to go against an Indianapolis Colts defense that has been historically bad. We haven't seen a defense this poor in a long time so a whole bunch of Larry Johnson before this one's over. But of course the Colts have that high powered offense led by Peyton Manning and Peyton said his best three games of the season were the last three of the regular season and here he is taking the field right now live and Peyton of course trying to erase some playoff frustration. Well and for Peyton Manning he He's going to be a Hall of Fame player no matter what he does the rest of his career. He has been simply sensational. But almost everything that he has done great has been during the regular season. And he knows historically if he's going to take his place among the very, very elite in this game, he has to start putting up some wins and some of those numbers in playoff action. That's right. And today would be the first step for Peyton Manning and the Colts. Peyton Manning only three and six in postseason play, hoping for a big start today as they face the high-powered running attack of Larry Johnson and the Chiefs. Back with the opening kick in just a moment. A nasty concussion that he suffered early on that forced him to miss half of this season. And last week, an ankle injury against Jacksonville had put him as a bit of a question mark for today's playoff game. But we watched him warm up. He looked fine. I talked to offensive coordinator Mike Scalari, and he said Trent Green is fit and ready for this game. As for Green, he told me, look, if I'm going to do anything in this league, if I'm going to get any pub whatsoever, I've got to do something in the playoffs. He's only had one chance at it after throwing for a gazillion regular season yards in the National Football League. Today, Trent Green will have his chance. Come. All right, Bob, Trent Green will be on the field first. The coaching matchup to best friends, Tony Dungy of Indianapolis and, of course, Herm Edwards of Kansas City. And, Chris, the Chiefs win the toss and will receive. That's their first victory of the day. Big for them. Yeah, we were talking about it driving over here, how important it was for the Chiefs to get the ball first, do something with it, put something on the board so they're not constantly in that catch-up mode against this Colts offense. And the Terry kicks off for Indianapolis and the dangerous Dante Hall. Let's it go over the goal line into the end zone for the touchback. So Trent Green and the Chiefs will take over at the 20. Let's meet the offense of Kansas City. University. Larry Johnson, Penn State. Chris Wilson, University of Pittsburgh. Eddie Kennison, Louisiana State University. Sammy Parker, University of Oregon. I thought in Gonzalez, University of California. Okay. <laughs> Jordan Black, Notre Dame. Ron Waters, University of North Texas. Casey Wigman, Iowa. Will Shields, University of Nebraska. John Wellborn, Go Bears. That was uh, Tony Gonzalez with his uh, Scarface imitation. All right. First down at the 20 for the Chiefs. First play of the game. Guess what? Larry Johnson gets the call. And the Colts were there waiting for him to stack him up at the line of scrimmage. And uh, Dwight Feeney, known as a pass rusher, saying to us a couple of days ago, that's a misconception. I can stop the run as well. Well, I, I thought the Kansas City Chiefs might come out early in this one and go play action on first down and try and throw the ball. I always thought if you wanted to run it early, you should throw first and vice versa. That time, the Chiefs ran right into the teeth of it. I think that's what Trent Green wanted to do, but <laughs> yeah, he was begging for it. <laughs> he was apparently vetoed. Here's second down. Larry Johnson again tries to bounce to the outside. It was cut off by Nick Harper, and as he tried to go up, he only got another couple of yards as we meet the Indy defense. Robert Mathis, Alabama a and &M. Anthony McFarlane, LSU. Raheem Brock. To Bart Freeney, Syracuse University. Bob Morris, Brigham Young University. Gary Brackett, Rock Cato Jr., Michigan. Nick Hoffman, Port Valley State. Antoine Bethel, Howard University. Bob Sanders, Iowa. Jason Davis, Charter Road High School. And that Colts defense hoping to get a lift from the return of the hard-hitting Bob Sanders today. Third down and long. 
Green's first pass hit as he delivers, and it's dropped. Incomplete. Dropped by Eddie Kennison. And so it's three and out for the Chiefs on their first possession. It was interesting. Nick Harper was sitting there, basically had his back turned to Trent Green. He didn't even know the ball was being thrown, and it hit Eddie Kennison, and he had the reaction time to simply knock it away from him. Pretty good start for that Colts defense. Though. Absolutely. It didn't look uh, like the worst rushing defense in the league on that one as they stopped Larry Johnson, forced a pass on third down, and it was incomplete. Cole quit. Dustin Cole quit. Wilkins makes the fair catch. A punt of 38 yards off the foot of Colquitt and the fair catch by Wilkins. No return and Peyton Manning and the Colts ready to come onto the field. There was a flag down. So we'll check the uh, penalty marker. First penalty marker of the day. Today's referee is Jeff Triplett. Impressive uh, first series though by the Colts defense. That has to give them a lift. This is an all-star crew of referees as well out here today. You make the playoffs as a referee just like you do as a team. During the kick, holding number 36 to the receiving team. 10-yard penalty, first down. Well, a special teams mistake for the Colts who have had their share of special teams mistakes this season. Dexter Reed was called for the hold. And so from the 31 yard line the Colts will have their first offensive series. Peyton telling us those last three games were his best this season. Once again passing for over 4,000 yards 4,397. First down pass and underneath it's to Joseph Adai the rookie from LSU getting a start today has been coming off the bench he ran for over a thousand yards gets the start today rewarding him for his initial season yeah, and the first back in league history to not start a single game and get a thousand yards and go right to the hurry up offense won't be a lot of replays today on the cold side of the ball they got six yards on first down five defensive backs on for Kansas City Adai Stretch play, broke a tackle, ran over another man, and has a cold first down. Greg Wesley finally got him down. It's a gain of 10. Well, anytime you have to get the corner, and Ryan Deem that time playing the tackle position was able to get his man hooked, and Joseph Adai is showing some of the ability that he's shown all season. You know, he's a much heavier runner than what he appears. When you first see him, you're thinking, okay, this is kind of a scat back kind of a guy. But you watch him run down the field, and he simply bounces off the tackles. Manning, crossing route complete underneath to the tight end, Utech. Ben Utech, who caught 37 passes on the regular season, fourth leading receiver. That one gained six on first down. And one of the most frustrating parts of playing against Peyton Manning is you can't get to him. The guy only gets touched on 12% of his pass attempts, and right now, the Kansas City Chiefs aren't getting anywhere close. Not only good protection from his line, but quick release. And here's what we've seen so often, Chris. Peyton at the line with his gyrations and his changing the play apparently, or maybe not. Anyway, it's Adai picking his way forward in a nice run by Joseph Adai. Close to the 36-yard line with Kali stopping him again at 10. Tremendous block this time by Dylan Gandy right here in the center. He is the left guard, and you see the cut there by Adai to get back behind him. They simply want to get movement. They want to get a body on a body and then let Adai make the cut off of it. But right now, the Colts' offensive line is getting pushed. They're getting movement against the Chiefs. Adai, and a steady diet of him as the Colts take a page from the Kansas City playbook and uh, run Adai before he is tackled by Allen. And Tom, what's happening here is that the Chiefs are playing the pass. They're essentially playing that cover two shell look. They're going to try and take away these two outstanding receivers on the outside. And they admit it to us. We know they're going to have some yardage against us. They're going to take the ball up and down the field. But the game for us starts once they get inside the 30 yard line. We cannot give up the touchdowns. Peyton in the shotgun, second and seven. A die flanking him. Chiefs show blitz. Peyton hits the hot receiver Clark, and Dallas Clark has another 
second the first down inside the Chiefs 25 yard line where he's tackled by Kavika Mitchell another 10 yard chunk. If there's been a major difference this year with Peyton Manning it's plays just like this they come with the slot blitz he picks it up and dumps it off. We don't see the down the field throws quite as much as we have in years past but he's been a much more patient much more mature quarterback throwing underneath. Hands to a die hit in the backfield and dropped. Now Peyton telling us a couple days ago it was a sign of his maturity. He admitted it early in his career he might not have been so patient wanting to go for the home run every time and maybe the Indy offense's reputation is still that but they've become much more patient long drives throwing underneath and we used to see teams blitz Peyton Manning all the time but today the Kansas City Chiefs will blitz hardly at all because their feeling is as long as we can make them go the long way maybe they make a mistake maybe they have a penalty and we can stop them that way. After that loss of two, sets up a second and 12 for Manning. Fakes to a dive. Rolling to his right. Under pressure, did get rid of it, but for a short gain to Fletcher, the tight end. That'll be another loss on the play back to the 30 yard line as Jared Allen played it well for Kansas City. And that's what the Chiefs are going to have to do at some point begin to force Peyton Manning to move out of the pocket. If you allow him to simply sit in there, and just pick you apart especially with their not bringing the pressure it is going to be a long day the Chiefs have tremendous pressure guys on the outside with Holly and Jared Allen and they have to start getting there third and 16 Manning in the gun the die gives him a block gives him time to deliver but behind Marvin Harrison is intended receiver and incomplete. You know for Marvin Harrison he's a little bit like Peyton Manning for all the great numbers he's put up in the regular season in the playoffs he only has two touchdown catches which is simply remarkable when you look at the history of these two guys and what they've done together for them to only have two touchdown passes in the playoffs probably goes a long way towards explaining why they haven't had much success either. I think both of them came in uh, the same game too, both those touchdowns and here is. A timeout as Vinatieri had come on lining up for an attempted field goal. A timeout with 846 left in the opening quarter. Peyton Manning not happy with that miss as he threw behind Harrison miscommunication scoreless. Longer for a bold taste that finishes clean expect everything. And Adam Vinatieri 48 yard field goal good and keeps his string going. He has never missed in the RCA Dome as a member of the New England Patriots or now the Indianapolis Colts. A 48 yard field goal by Adam Vinatieri, the first points of the game. Boy, how good do you feel as a head coach when you trot this guy out there? I, I mean, how many big kicks and, and tough situations, and you think about the kicks that he made in the snow in New England and the, the final seconds of the Super Bowl and he just has become Mr. Automatic out there and there was a tremendous tremendous pickup look at this, that with the Patriots in this dome 11 for 11 this season in this dome 13 for 13 he's not going to want to move over to that other stadium that includes the 48 yarder he just hit and and if you're talking about the Colts making a playoff run how valuable might he be. You know given their history and what they've seen in the past with some missed field goals and you go back just to the last one they lost against the Pittsburgh Steelers and the uh, the famous sort of lip reading that we all did from Peyton Manning <laughs> he missed it he missed it Adam Benetieri he doesn't miss so many Peyton got his offense down the field in field goal range couldn't get the TD and Herm Edwards of the Chiefs saying when Indy got in the red zone we had to hold him to field goals. Here's Vinatieri's kickoff. Dante Hall deep in the end zone will bring it out. Our way from one man. Rice moved to dodge another but then slammed down on the special teams play by the Colts Matt Giordano. So Trent Green in the Chiefs offense ready to make another appearance. Both students at Indiana University. I think she's probably up there saying let my husband throw the ball a little bit come on and we're all for this running game but uh, he's thrown for 4,000 yards three straight seasons there's only been a couple of guys named Fouts Marino and Manning that have ever done that he can throw it Larry Johnson's had two carries for two yards green on first down 
whips it to Gonzalez, who makes the catch at the 20 and then is buried by the pursuit of the Colts. Nick Harper was first on the scene. He's off to a good start in this first quarter. Nick Harper's already made a play in the backfield and then turned around and make that play there. But the other guy that is starting to make plays as well right now is Bob Sanders, the outstanding free safety who's been out for such a long time. Tony Gonzalez is going to make this catch. Harper's going to make the hit. But watch come flying out of the screen. There's 21 Bob Sanders. He's going to be flying a lot. We've seen him leaping over piles. He really has given this team an emotional lift just being out there. Second and six. Here's Larry Johnson again twisted to the turf after a short game. This time by Anthony McFarland on the defensive line for the Colts. What a great play by Booger McFarland on this one. I believe that's him right there is going to just simply split the gap jump oh. all the way around the center Casey Wigman and come backside. That's the kind of quickness he has. The only problem I have with Booger McFarland is sometimes he gets tired. I see great plays out of him early in the game but usually by the third or the fourth quarter he's not quite the same guy. He surely looked quick there setting up a third down and five. Green stands in the pocket almost intercepted as it was deflected. Kennison had it go off his hands, almost intercepted by the Colts, but it goes incomplete. And Trent Green's really lucky this one wasn't picked off because once it went off of Eddie Kennison, that was just sitting there, and a couple of Colts defenders had a shot at it. Cato June thought he had it all the way, and his own guy was in the way. Right now, the Chiefs look really nervous out here. Polk went for his second punt. Watches it sail out of bounds. Peyton Manning comes back on the field for the second time. His team up by a field goal. Basic. That's the pass play on the backside. And if you don't like that, do whatever you want to do. That's what Tom told us. It was a progression that Peyton goes through. Here he sets up a screen pass. And Joseph Adai's helmet ripped off by James Reed. And one of the things the Kansas City Chiefs do a great job of is they assign people in certain situations to look for the screen. One of these defensive tackles, and I'll be perfectly honest with you, their two defensive tackles aren't very good pass rushers anyway, so they might as well play the screen, and that time Reed did a great job of it. <laughs> Get about as good as you can do, as a matter of fact. Yep. Second and 14. Manning steps up, delivers underneath again to Harrison. So back to that play calling a progression that that Peyton goes through from Tom Moore and he said Tom said well it sounds complicated but when you understand it it's not I don't know. Yeah, it looks kind of complicated <laughs> to me doesn't it but it's essentially what you're looking at there is three different plays and the alert base 80 basic that is the pass play on the back end of it the basic simply meaning they're going to run it as is and not add on like an X slant X hook Z go one of those kind of patterns for the wide receiver. Tom also said that Einstein's theory of relativity was easily understood by him, but not by anybody else. I don't know if that's the same category or not. Peyton's pass on target and caught. Marvin Harrison off to the races. Wayne tried to give him a block. Finally chased out of the 25-yard line by Greg Wesley. There's the strike. Manning to Harrison for 42. And that time Ty Law didn't get much of a bump on the outside against Marvin Harrison and Greg Wesley thought he had an interception. He was waiting on the football and all of a sudden Marvin Harrison reached out his arms and picked that one off. And uh, what did Herm Edwards say? He said we know there are going to be a few fires out here. We just got to go put out the fire and don't let it burn the house down. Well they got that one burning on 42 yard strike. Here's Joseph Adai. Bounce him to the outside. That stretch play. Short game before he's driven out of bounds by several of the chief defenders. Good job by Jared Allen on the outside and then Sammy Knight came to clean it up right there. You'll see Jared Allen get penetration inside and force a die to bounce it out and that allowed Sammy Knight enough time to get there. Sammy Knight's a hitter. He'll come out of the secondary and Allen is a guy that uh, has to be big today. These two ends Tom Ali and Jared Allen just simply have to be good today. It's the only chance. Knight, the second leading tackler for the Chiefs this season. 
Manny rifles it to Reggie Wayne. His first reception. Wayne going to the Pro Bowl this season for the first time after 86, a career high regular season receptions. It's quite a duo, really. These two guys on the outside. And when you talk to Herm Edwards, he said, guys, I'm just going to tell you, they beat me running the football, so be it. They beat me with a tight end or a back thrown to them, so be it. But we just cannot allow these two wideouts to beat us up and down the field. So far, they have been, though. Manny over the top. Dallas Clark makes the reception as Manny really went over the top on his throwing motion and found Clark for eight yards. Then Sertan and Johnson on the stop at the 10. And the versatility of Dallas Clark just so important to this Colts team. They've lost their slot receivers, two of them this year, Brandon Stokely and Ricky Pohl. And to be able to put Dallas Clark out there in the slot and play that role is really pretty remarkable. First and goal. And sprinting toward the end zone, Joseph Adai stopped at about the three-yard line. Gain of eight. Bill and Gandy again, the guard that time faked a pull to the left and then came back inside. Defensive linemen and linebackers tend to read what the offensive linemen do. And when you see the guard start to his left and then go back up the middle, everybody jumped that way and it created the hole right up the middle. Dan Klecko, the defensive lineman in the backfield at the fullback spot, offset eye. A die is the tailback. Second and goal. Joseph Adai pounding but can't get in. Terrific job on that one by Derek Johnson who came up and filled the hole. Big Klecko coming in there trying to lead the way but the whole thing got stopped. If you let that fullback get started a lot of times uh, there's no stopping that much beef coming at you. Of course, he's the wide receiver threat now. You see, he <laughs> let everybody know after catching the touchdown last week. Got a touchdown pass. Dan Klecko, 5'11", 275, the son of Joe Klecko. Fake to a dive. Manning, end zone. Throws it out of the end zone, incomplete, intended for Dallas Clark. Well, they go to the play action on this one, and so many times you just are going to fool everybody in the back of the end zone. But Bernard Pollard fell off late and just got enough in the way for that to happen. I think what Peyton Manning's saying is that my receiver on that side didn't influence Bernard Pollard to go to the corner of the end zone. And so when he hooked up, it allowed Pollard to fall back underneath Dallas Clark. Fourth down, 19-yard field goal attempt. Vinatieri, two for two today. But Kansas City holds them again to a field goal in the red zone. It's 6 nothing Colts in the first. Quarter, if you're a Colts fan, the good news is you have six points in the lead. If you're a Chiefs fan, the good news is you forced that high-octane Indy, Indy offense into field goals twice now in the red zone. Yeah, this easily could have been a blowout at this point in the game. I'm sure Herm Edwards is not ecstatic with what his offense has been doing, which is basically nothing. But at least he's not out of the game yet. Vinatieri to kick. Hall takes it out of the end zone. Stumbled. Regained his balance. A flag is down. Another one comes flying. And he just crossed the 20-yard line before the special teams of the Colts made the play. Led by Robert Mathis. During return, illegal block in the back. Number 49, the return team. Half the distance field goal, first down. That puts Kansas City back in a hole again. They have yet to get Larry Johnson untracked. So here, an NFL insider Tom Curran breaks down every game, including the bulletin board material for the Cowboys Seahawks game, and who has the edge at NBCSports.com, and get previews of the remaining wild card games as well as recaps after the game at NFL.com. Larry Johnson bouncing to the outside and tackled. At the line of scrimmage, or maybe a loss by Marlon Jackson. 
One of the other things that bringing Bob Sanders back into the lineup allows Marlon Jackson to go back to his cornerback position, and he is a very physical corner. So physical, in fact, that they've been playing him at safety in Bob Sanders' absence. But now you're seeing the best of the tacklers on the field for the Colts, and it's showing up so far in this one. Larry Johnson, four carries for three yards. Here he is again. Found a little seam, but tackled short of the 15-yard line by Rob Morris. And Rob Morris has also been an addition to this defense. They've been moving people around. Morris is a guy that has played a lot of middle linebacker during the course of his career. But they just felt like they had to be a little bigger and a little stouter in there. So essentially, they have two middle linebackers in now, Rob Morris and Gary Brackett. Morris goes to the sideline as they come with their nickel package. Jackson returned. We see what's happened so far for the Chiefs, and they're facing another third down. Sack! Dwight Freeney, the sack specialist of the Colts, with that whirling dervish, gets to Trent Green. And without question, one of the most exciting players in football is Dwight Freeney. He literally just went underneath Jordan Black on this one. And you're saying, well, why can't a big old offensive lineman get down there and make that block? They don't bend well. <laughs> they just don't. They, it's hard for them to get down low and make that kind of a block. And Freeney has a whole lot of sacks with that exact move. A lot of times he'll spin back yeah. inside. That time he dipped low and went in for the sack. Jordan Black was beaten but did recover the ball after Green, uh, Trent Green lost it. Colquitt's punt. Here's Wilkins. Wilkins dodging two. Crosses midfield. There's a penalty marker down. Get the Aaron Fox on the special teams tackle. Excuse me, Chris. You get the feeling this Colts defense is a little tired yeah. of hearing about it. I think they were fed up. Yeah, I mean, there was a frustration level when we talked to Dwight Freeney and Booger McFarlane and so many of these guys. They had just heard enough. And, and they said, you know, there's nothing wrong with their scheme. During the kick, personal foul, face mask. Number 28 on the return team. 15 yards. Automatic first down. So it will be a first down when we return. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. The Indianapolis Colts 6 and the Kansas City Chiefs nothing. NBC's NFL wild card playoff continues right after these messages. Anything for Herm Edwards and the Kansas City Chiefs and now defensively they really need another stop to just try and begin to swing this momentum back. Indianapolis has outgained Kansas City 107 to 2 yet it's only 6 nothing. Joseph Adai. Nice run on first down got him about nine yards before he stopped by Walls right at the sideline. One of the things that Tom Moore the offensive coordinator was telling us about Joseph Adai is Probably the most important part of this season is the fact that this young man didn't force us to water down our offense. The fact that he was able to come in here, learn this no huddle, learn that language that we learned a little bit about, <laughs> and make it all work on the fly. Very bright young man. And Peyton Manning saying, too, that he's not afraid to ask questions, which sometimes rookies are reluctant to tell you what they don't know. Not afraid to ask questions, and Tom Moore said that uh, he was good to go on the opening day of the regular season with all the terminology, the blitz pickups, and all the things that rookies typically find so difficult. Well, and you really hit on the key, and that being blitz pickups, because if you're playing running back in the National Football League and you can't do blitz pickups, you will not play. I don't care how good of a runner you are. First down, Colts, fake to a dive. Manning, plenty of time all day. And finally, just has to dump it off to a die, and that was not a good thing because a die paid the price as Derek Johnson hit him as he uh, left the field and pounded him down. Loss of three. And that time, Peyton Manning was begging Marvin Harrison to come back towards him. He was in the middle of a big hole, but Harrison kept running across the field, and there was nowhere for Peyton Manning to throw the ball. You saw him sort of come back, come back, help me out here a little bit. Unfortunately, met his teammate had to take a shot. Second and 13. Chiefs show blitz, but now back out, trying to confuse Peyton Manning, who is the best, they say, in the world at doing stuff like that. And the Chiefs did a good job of disguising everything as they caught a die in his tracks for another loss. 
and Jimmy Wilkerson a backup defensive lineman getting some penetration on this one the Chiefs are going to do some stunts but it is a very difficult team to try and screen against there you see again the defensive line assigned to the back assigned to the screen a lot of times it means they only get three man pressure but you're not going to hit those screens against them third and long Manning in the shotgun Peyton across the middle to Clark who latches on to it at midfield big first down for the Colts who were the best in the league at third down conversions 21 yards record conversion rate this year and I've got to tell you Tom that throw was ridiculous I mean every once in a while you see this guy make a throw so perfectly timed with zip on it down the middle of the field and Dallas Clark tough as they come took the shot and a big big first down Ball rests on the midfield. Stripe first down. Colts. They lead it six nothing. Second quarter. AFC wild card. A dive. Stretch play. Look for a block. Cut off. Loss of one on the play is Jared Allen stringing it out and then making the tackle. Now they think they have something going over there to that left side, but Jared Allen and uh, Derek Johnson really have just done a good job of taking away the cutback lanes and forcing him to try and bounce outside and that hasn't been there either so anytime you're running that stretch play you're really looking for some way to cut it back but so far die hasn't found any spot Peyton Manning so far 12 of 14 for 89 yards to six different receivers uh -oh. intercepted Ty Law Manning's old nemesis Taken down at the eight yard line by Marvin Harrison. Peyton Manning has seen Ty Law before and he'd like to forget it. Law picks it off, jumps the route, and goes 42 yards. When he was with the Patriots three years ago, Ty Law got three of them off of Peyton Manning. That time, just a complete mix up on the play. Marvin Harrison kept going. Peyton Manning thought he was going to arrow back out. And Ty Law, who's been over there beating and battling against Marvin Harrison the whole game, has confused Peyton Manning again. He just has his number. So here's the break the Chiefs needed. They have the ball now at the nine yard line. First and goal. Johnson, LJ, battles his way close to the one yard line. Spot him at about the two. Sanders and Bethea with the tackle. Ty Law has just had a remarkable career against Peyton Manning. You know, everybody has somebody, you know, who seems to be their nemesis. And Ty Law, he was so confident in our meeting with him last That's night. Right. He just knew that he knew <laughs> what Peyton Manning was going to do. And there he is early in the game completely turning this thing around. Second and goal. Larry Johnson again. And the Colts expecting it again. Managed to stack him up before he reaches the end zone and celebrate another stop of the big Kansas City running back at 230 pounds. There are so many different reads in this offense. And one of them for the wide receiver is if he thinks it is man coverage, he's supposed to continue on or arrow back. That time Marvin Harrison decided that he was going to go on. I assume Peyton Manning thought he was going to arrow back, but Ty Law just simply confused him on that play. Oh, Trent Green fell down as he took the snap from center and covers up back at the five yard line. And the center probably stepped on his foot as he tried to pull out. And there just simply could not have been a worse time for that. Actually, it was the guard, right. Brian Waters, who stepped over, tried to get the position blocked. And, you know, I mean, it's professional football, and you say, how in the world can this happen? But it seems like you see it at least once every game, doesn't yeah. it? Well, they have to get, you have to be so quick off the ball that you do see it. So Tynes will attempt a 23 yard field goal. He hit 24 of 31 on the season. And it's no good. No good. A 23 yard attempt. Tynes misses. And the Chiefs, after the interception by Ty Law, come up empty. That may be the most expensive step on a foot the Kansas City Chiefs have ever had. The momentum of the game had completely turned their way. 
And they simply blew it. Off the upright, no good. Home in Indiana's capital city. And the Colts leading 6 nothing after the missed field goal by the Chiefs following the Ty Law interception. Dominique Rhodes in at running back. Gets his first carry, and it's a big one as he cuts back. Wayne gave him a little block, and he takes it to the 45-yard line. The ball came loose, but it was down. Ball was down, no fumble. 25 yards with Lenny Walls finally chasing him down. And you see Joseph Adai celebrating this nice run by his mentor, Dominic Rhodes is the guy that has typically played in the early part of the game because they felt like that those early game adjustments would be easier for a veteran player. But Joseph Adai had been so good, they finally had to get him in the starting lineup. But a good relationship between those two. Rhodes rushed for 641 yards during the season. Here he is again. Why not? And another nice game. 10 yards and a first down, maybe 11. With Jared Page coming up to make the stop for Kansas City. It is another Indy first down. One of the things that you can't do is allow the emotion to be drained out of you. Now Dominic Rhodes has come in this game with fresh legs and a lot of air and ready to go. And you can just see the Kansas City Chiefs defense now. The emotion has been drained out of them. They've got to find a way to prop themselves back up here. Holds on the move and behind Dominic Rhodes who makes it to the 39 yard line. Excuse me to the. Not James Reed on the tackle made it just close to the 40 yard line 41 perhaps. You know defenses are like that anyway. Anytime they're the ones that make the play you know to get you in position for a touchdown and then the offense goes down and screws it up. They're even madder than what they are under ordinary circumstances. Again on the outside they're trying to beat up these receivers the best they can that time Lenny Walls but there's really plenty of room here and for Wayne just yep. in and out you could see his eyes nowhere close to where the ball was he tried to catch it with the Braille method there. <laughs> That's one of those textbook things where you don't watch the ball and start to run before you catch it. There you see a lot of drop passes for the Colts in face of third and seven. Steps up in the pocket. There's a flag down as the pass is caught by UTEC. We'll check the penalty marker. Herm Edwards thinks it's against the Colts. Offense, number 33. 15 yard penalty. It'll still be third down. So Dominique Rhodes with the chop block. You're not allowed when a defensive lineman is engaged to have a back come in the back side and then go low. You saw Tarek Glenn just barely get his hands there on Jared Allen and about the same time Dominique Rhodes yes. went low on him. It was a bang bang oh, right play right. but that's what they're going to call. Really close because Tarek Glenn at least in the minds in the mind of Dominique Rhodes wasn't blocking that guy. You could see before that play, he gave a little hand signal to say, I'm going to set inside. You take him to the outside. And Dominic thought that he had him by himself. And then when he came back, it created the penalty. So the ball just short of the Colt 44 yard line now on third and 22. Manning being chased. Has to unload it. Nearly a one handed catch by Reggie Wayne. Yes, it is a one handed catch by Reggie Wayne. But short of the first down. Gain of nine. Well, again, they're starting to get some pressure now on Peyton Manning, and you can see the effort by Jared Allen. And anytime you can get Peyton Manning moving out of the pocket, we've seen him when he's been beaten in the past against the Pittsburgh Steelers, against the San Diego Chargers. They go back to those losses against the New England Patriots. They get him to move off the spot, and now Kansas City is starting to have a little success with that. Hunter Smith, who averaged 44.4 yards a punt this season, will punt it to Dante Hall. Fair catch called. 
And made by Hall at the 13 yard line. 34 yard punt as the Chiefs take over, trailing by six. Power takes one for the team, learns what it's like to get a hot flash. Plus, all week long today celebrates 55 years on the air. That's Monday on today. <laughs> I have no comment whatsoever on that one. I think Trent Green's hoping for a hot flash yeah, right here. Get one since they have six total yards so far. The Chiefs. Gonzalez drops that one. Well, it has been the Indianapolis Colts defense so far coming up with the plays that have made the difference. Of course, they came out hot and tried to establish a run early, and they said, "I don't think so." And then Dwight Freeney, they tried to throw it. I don't think so. Then down the goal line, Larry Johnson. I don't think so. So as <laughs> much as it's been said and written about this Colts defense so far, at least thus far, they play pretty well. Six total yards. They've given up no first downs. Here's the hand to Hall. And he's out with a gain of about eight yards. Dante Hall caught by Marlon Jackson. Best play of the day for the Chiefs. Dante Hall is going to come right off the edge over here. A little inside handoff as they bring Jordan Black around on the trap and at least it was something a little creative here for the Kansas City Chiefs they desperately need a first down just to give their defense a break now that was an eight yard gain that exceeded the entire total for the game thus far by the Kansas City offense third down and two green under pressure escapes rolls and delivers dropped Dante Hall dropped that one and the Chiefs continue to sputter on offense. That time Trent Green scrambled out nicely and had plenty of room hits Dante Hall right between the eight and the two and just can't hang on to it. One of the problems they have right now is that Tony Gonzalez is being left in as a blocker. Here is your best receiving threat. And because they can't block on the outside against Dwight Freeney, they're having to use Gonzalez as an additional blocker. Three drops by the Chiefs so far as Colquitt punts. Wilkins backpedals, takes it at the 11. There's Wilkins dropped at the 30 yard line. Kansas City offense with four three and outs and a missed field goals. Indy still up. The promos and everything. <laughs> wow. How quickly they forget. Yeah, as they should. Five minutes plus to halftime. Two Vinatieri field goals so far in this first half. Peyton Manning hits UTEC. Been his favorite target really so far in the game. The big tight end Ben Utech from Minnesota, 6'6, 251. And it isn't so much that the Kansas City Chiefs are stopping the Colts, but they keep getting hit with penalties or mistakes or drops or whatever the case may be. You just get the feeling this Colts offense is about to explode. Joseph Adai has returned for the Colts, gets the carry. Well strung out by the Kansas City defense. They let the pursuit catch up and stop a die after a short gain of a yard or so. One of the reasons that that stretch play has not been working here is that the Chiefs have been playing their two cornerbacks on the line of scrimmage almost the entire game. So Ty Law and Patrick Sertan have been out there on the edges battling with the wide receivers and all they're doing in the interior play is just bouncing it to them. So in the graphic it's feast or famine. For Peyton Manning in the cold so far. Big play or nothing? This one will be nothing as the pass sails incomplete, intended for UTEC. Defended by the linebacker Johnson. Well, anytime you can begin to get a little bit of pressure on Peyton Manning, just force him a little bit off his spot, get somebody in his face. It's a remarkable stat. 12% of his throws are all that he even gets touched. Now, I'm telling you, there are some guys that can play quarterback if you're not going to hit them out there. And this guy's better than all of those. So 12% of the times, all he's getting touched, 88% of the time, nobody lays a finger on him. Manning drops it off underneath. And a big game after the catch to a die. Penalty marker. Die would have the first down at 
after that 16 yard scamper if it holds and Dallas Clark was clapping his hands he thinks there was some illegal contact down the field prior to the pass illegal contact number 56 in the defense that penalty will be declined it was on the plate first down Derek Johnson guilty penalty declined first down Indy I uh, got the double move there by Dallas Clark not much of a contact more of a reaction kind of thing but ever since that New England game a few years ago you're not allowed to touch any of these Colts receivers beyond five yards and now he made a nice move in the hole and then makes it to the 30 yard line and a first down Patrick Sertan stops him 12 yard run by Joseph Adai the rookie from LSU you know the fans in Kansas City right now are sitting there thinking our defense is getting pushed around a bit but the simple truth is Kansas City's offense has been so inept that they put this defense in a horrible position are they tired absolutely they're tired because they've been out there on the field the entire half 12 carries 54 yards for a die Manny on the out finds his receiver Moorhead as Aaron Moorhead who had eight catches in the regular season snags that one from Peyton Manning. 12 percent lowest in the NFL amazing and some of it's due to his quick release and, and great protection as well. There's no question that and the fact that people are afraid to blitz him anymore. Three touches no hits knockdowns or sacks. It's like a handshake or something. <laughs> Three touches. Around in the backfield, dives inside the 20 yard line, covered by Jared Allen. But just to get back to that point, at one time when you played against Peyton Manning, everybody sent the pressure, and Gunther Cunningham, who really made his reputation, the defensive coordinator of the Kansas City Chiefs, as a blitzer, when I talked to him this week, he said, There's no use. There's really, honestly, there's no use in trying to do it. He's only going to make you look bad, so you just have to take your chances when they get down in the red zone and try and hold them to field goals. 13 first downs Indy, none for Kansas City. A dive. Tackled for a loss back at the 20 yard line by Derek Johnson. As we approach the two minute warning here in the first half. Two minutes to go in the first half. Trent Green and the Chiefs held without a first a preview of tonight's NFC wildcard matchup. The Seahawks and Cowboys and Peter King on the NFL's coaching carousel coming up on the Toyota Halftime Show. Check out that in the middle of the crowd. Recognize that guy? <laughs> Lovey Smith, the head coach of the Chicago Bears. You know, one time all he and Herm Edwards and Tony Dungy were all a part of that Tampa Bay coaching staff. Tony finally paid. <laughs> Tony did. Tony I finally paid. With Lovey that he wasn't going to pay. He paid. <laughs> so Tony Dungy paid for dinner last night with the three of them and their wives. And uh, Herm said that Tony never has any money. And he had to pay for the first lunch that the coaching staff in Tampa Bay had the day he joined the Buccaneers. Manning sacked back at the 25 yard line by Patrick Sertan. Well, once again, the Chiefs have found an answer down in the red zone. Sertan's going to come off the edge right here. And come on the blitz. Anytime you end up with guys on the slot, that time Peyton just missed a wide open receiver. He should have found. Third down and 16 from the Kansas City 25 yard line. And what a win it would be for this Kansas City defense if they could go in at halftime just down nine to nothing. Once, delivers to the end zone and it is intercepted intercepted by Page Jared Page Manning intercepted in the end zone by Page who had three interceptions in the regular season I have to tell you I'm not really sure what Peyton Manning thought he saw on this one I, I mean Jared Page didn't disguise it. He didn't try and fool anybody. <laughs> he sat right there in his cover two. They had a, a two man man underneath and he tried to force one in there and unbelievably now 
Kansas City is going to go in unless this offense messes it up again. No worse down than six to nothing. I'm sure there's some Kansas City fans out there thinking, what about Damon Heward? Are we now to the point where you begin to think about that a little bit? Well, you saw the former Bruin picking off Manning. Second time today he's been intercepted. Kansas City takes over at the 14. Green rifles it, and he's lucky that one wasn't intercepted. It was right in the hands of Brackett. Gary Brackett had it and a path to the end zone. Well, we've talked about problems on both sides, but really neither one of these quarterbacks are playing very well right now. And I, Tom, you hate to say it, but they, they look nervous. They look unsettled. They're making decisions that you never see these veteran guys make. I mean, these are two of the best passers in the league, and Damon Heward, Say what you want about him. I mean, it may not have a big arm, but he does not throw interceptions. Matt Green only one for six, so he hands it off. And Larry Johnson, tackled by Cato June, the leading tackler for the Colts defense this season. And Larry Johnson has virtually been a non-factor yeah, so far in this half. You have to remember that this is a historically bad run defense the Colts have had all season, and they've done it. Kansas City might have been too one dimensional coming in. Here's Green, just a little flip pass. Gets nothing to Larry Johnson. You know, an absolutely disastrous drive right there. I mean, not only do you not get anything, but now you're also going to give Peyton Manning a shot to come back down the field. How bad have they been this half? They do not have a first down this entire first half. 59 seconds left. Colts with a timeout call. They have one remaining with the clock now 103. They put some time back on it as Colquitt is lined up in punt formation as Peyton Manning studies the still photos over on the sideline and nobody's getting close to him at the moment. He's had two interceptions here in the first half and has not put up a touchdown. They have only two venetary field goals. And Kansas City with six possessions still has not made a first down. Colquitt's punt sails toward Terrence Wilkins takes it at the 30 of the Colts reverses his field trying to pick up a block can't get it twisted down by William Kershaw 54 yard punt five yards on the return Peyton Manning comes back out meanwhile without apparently Marvin Harrison and that was on the interception so you want to talk about a tough interception. He is back out on the field. Numi? Yeah, I was watching Marvin Harrison. I was standing about 10 feet from him. He was flexing that left wrist and squeezing his left hand as if he was trying to squeeze a golf ball. But he's out here flanked right. Peyton Manning here with less than a minute to go. Manning from the shotgun. Is on to it for an eight-yard gain. Tackled by, tackle by Kavika Mitchell. Holds in the hurry up. Mark again. Dodges the first man, dives to the 45 of Kansas City. 12-yard gain on that one is the spike from Manning. Stops the clock with 22 seconds. They probably still need about you know, 12 yards or so in order to give Adam Vinatieri a legitimate shot. Although in this building, maybe he can make it from anywhere. You know? He's who, never missed in this building. Uh, who knows? But well, I tell you, you wonder if Peyton Manning could this be in his head a little bit now? I mean, the, the struggles he's had in the playoffs, and now two interceptions again here in the first half. the coverage to the tight end Dallas Clark Derek Johnson hits him immediately nine yard gain as they get into Vinatieri range he was hitting him 55 yards in the pregame warmups Joseph well, Adai. Get down you better get down two seconds left timeout Indianapolis just barely evading disaster there two seconds left Vinatieri will attempt the field goal when we return See Adam Vinatieri line up for his third field goal attempt of the game. He has two previously. 
And we repeat, has never missed in this building. This one will be 50 yards. Had no problem with those in the pregame warm-ups. Send it on its way, and it is just inside the left upright and good from 50 yards, Adam Vinatieri. And that attempt did not have to happen if Kansas City's defense had allowed the running back to run a little farther there and held him up. They would have never had time for that field goal attempt. So 9 nothing Colts at halftime. Stay tuned for the Toyota Halftime Show after your local station. Back to Kansas City. And a surprise that maybe we should redo our opening on camera. Weren't we talking about Peyton Manning and Larry Johnson and all the things that they were going to do against these two defenses? And so far, neither one of them have done much of anything. Larry Johnson held in check for the Colts defense, and Peyton Manning has thrown two interceptions and has not put up a touchdown. Start the third quarter with Kansas City kicking off to Indianapolis. Hines kick taken by Wilkins. And Wilkins with a good return across the 30-yard line to the 32. Well, I can't remember seeing uh, an uglier stats panel than this one for the first half. No first downs for Kansas City. It's the first time since 1960 in the NFL playoffs that the team has been held in the first half without a first down. Just remarkable. And really, it's been mistakes by Peyton Manning that has even kept the Chiefs in this game. You think you take away those mistakes, and this one's probably a blowout at this point. But for this Kansas City defense, I think they played absolutely brilliantly, as has the Colts defense. And who would have thought that would happen? Well, Peyton's uh, postseason woes continue as Joseph Adai gets the call on first down for Indianapolis. You just have to wonder what happened in the locker room for the Kansas City Chiefs. Herm Edwards earlier this week made basically the statement that, hey, I don't care who it is, if they're playing poorly enough, that we'd be willing to make a change. This is desperation time, and just don't know what happened with the quarterback situation in there and how long you're willing to ride with Trent Green and no first downs. Manning pumps once. A little short on delivery to Reggie Wayne. And talking about the quarterbacks of Kansas City, let's see what Numi found out, Bob. I mean, well, I asked Herm Edwards flat out, would you pull Trent Green for Damon Heward? And he said, absolutely not. He said, we just need to relax and make a first down. I said, at any point in the second half? And he said, not at this time, not ever. So Green will be the quarterback for the second half. As for the Indianapolis Colts, Tony Dungy said the only thing he didn't like was the scoreboard. He loves his defense playing fast and hard, but his offense needs to finish the drives and not turn the ball over, Tom. Manning hits Wayne, Reggie Wayne, with a first down for the Colts into Kansas City territory, tackled by Sammy Knight. That time, uh, Sertan ends up slipping on the play, just the hook underneath, and you see some of the timing, and one of the issues the Cincinnati Bengals saw this earlier this year that if you're not getting pressure and you're not blitzing and you're not just allowing him to sit back there and these kind of underneath routes are going to be there all day long for Peyton Manning. He just has to be patient enough to take them. A guy dancing his way forward looking for a seam cannot find one. Tom Bahali makes the tackle for Kansas City the rookie from Penn State and Peyton Manning was talking about that he has matured as a player. And he understands that I can't always take those shots down the field. And yet in the first half, he tried one of those shots for an interception down the field. And what he needs to do is understand now the Chiefs are giving him this underneath stuff. Just take it, take it, take it. Even if you kick seven field goals, who cares? Because your defense is playing so well. He's not used to having that kind of right. a, a formula. That's what he's done, doing. And he's hit seven different receivers so far. That one, though, is not one he wanted to hit. It's wearing a white jersey. It's Ty Law. And it will be ruled, yes, an interception. Just now, they say it did not touch the ground. It's the third interception thrown by Peyton Manning today, and the second picked off by Ty Law, who picked him off three times in a playoff game at New England. Ty Law is just going to have another one thrown right to him. You saw Marvin Harrison sort of drift in, and now the question becomes, did he actually make that catch? The ring gear on many half tons out there is th And there's no question there was a bobble on the play. Challenging the ruling on the field of an interception. 
but can you definitively say by that that he didn't catch it? I don't think you could see it from that angle. Okay, let's review. Sarah, you back in Indianapolis. A challenge has been made whether Ty Law intercepted Peyton Manning. Here's the ruling. Jeff Triplett. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands. Indianapolis is charged a timeout. So Ty Law for the second time today has picked off Peyton Manning and Peyton now has thrown three interceptions his last 15 passes. Out of all the looks this is the most definitive here. You can clearly see the ball moving sort of underneath but you could not tell whether Ty Law ever allowed it to touch the ground and because the call on the field was interception there was not enough evidence to overturn it. Good job by Jeff Triplett. So now the Kansas City offense tries to get something going desperately in need of a lift and Larry Johnson caught from behind after a three yard gain by Dwight Freeney. Let's go back and find out exactly why this happened. You're going to get a zone drop underneath here by Tom Bahali and Marvin Harrison is going to duck inside that drop and then it forced Peyton Manning to throw it wide. He was anticipating again Harrison coming back out. Those two have misread each other twice today. Both have resulted in tie law interceptions. Johnson again nothing there. Got a couple of yards up the middle. The Colts defense stacked to stop him as Tom Moore the offensive coordinator over with Peyton Manning. And uh, while we were away this is what happened between Harrison and Peyton Manning as Peyton's postseason woes continue here today. I have to tell you Tom I think Marvin Harrison was wrong on both of those because both times that one he should have arrowed back out underneath there and the other interception he faked Peyton Manning in the believe he was coming back out and he didn't do it. Third down Trent Green's pass off target incomplete not even close to Tony Gonzalez. How long is what Ty Law is saying. How long before you guys do something on the offensive side. This has been one of the truly inept performances that we've seen in the playoffs in a long time. Defensively the Kansas City Chiefs are absolutely playing their brains out right now. Maybe they should go over and play a little offense. <laughs> what, what could you lose. No first downs for Kansas City. None. Zero. Zilch. And yet they're only down by nine. After three Peyton Manning interceptions. Cole Quit skies it. Wilkins calls for a fair catch and makes it at the 10 yard line. Well Peyton Manning is going to be back on the field. Ty Law has two interceptions. Nothing to show for it. Nine nothing Indy over Kansas City. Peyton Manning with another tough afternoon in a playoff situation. Ty Law picked him off once. Twice. And the Chiefs had another interception as well. Three interceptions thrown by Peyton Manning. And Ty Law, who has a history of victimizing Peyton Manning, has done so again today. Joseph Adai slithering ahead for a gain on first down. And let's be fair, Peyton Manning with a history of victimizing himself and his teammates in the playoffs. I mean, this is unbelievable, in my opinion. Ty Law is outstanding, and he's a sneaky guy, and he's never in man coverage, so he's drifting around. He gives you all kinds of problems. But Peyton Manning is simply one of the great quarterbacks in the game, and it has not translated to the playoffs. Short drop, but nobody there. Then he finds a die out of the backfield. It's good enough for a first down as Gerard Page finally stops the rookie. Well the one thing the Chiefs have been able to do is force Manning to come to his second and third looks that time he comes all the way back and it's one of the things they've been working a lot on this year with a die and that is don't block all day block for a moment and then get in the route that time it worked perfectly. What did Peyton Manning say I'd rather have him out in the route than back there protecting me quick toss to Dallas Clark Page with his second consecutive tackle gain of seven. And for Trent Green and Damon Heward on the sideline they're over there trying to figure it out. Now there's no question that Trent Green has the better arm. That Trent Green has the better pedigree. Trent Green has all the numbers. But Damon Heward this year 
you put his numbers on the board, they're as good as anybody that has played in the National Football League. Now, he's much more of a caretaker than a true gunslinger, but who knows? Sometimes you do get a little desperate and you need to start looking for answers. Was the Kansas City problem, though, the game plan? Because Larry Johnson's been stopped and it's like they had nothing to fall back on. Clark with another catch. Mitchell, the tackle of Kansas City. Well, you, and Dallas Clark here is going to just find an opening in the zone. These kind of throws are there all day. And, but these are throws that are obviously much easier in the middle of the field. And what we've seen are the Colts moving well between the 30s and getting stuff down inside the 30 when those zones begin to shrink because the field shrinks. Well, Edwards again saying that if we can hold with field goals in the red zone, we have a chance. They've done that. It's just the offense has got to Underneath the die. Can't get away from the shoestring tackle by Mitchell right at midfield. Just short of the first down. Again, here's the check down one more time. This is the part of Peyton Manning's game plan that we didn't see early in his career. He's now been telling himself and telling us yeah. that he has convinced himself in order for him to win and win in playoff games and in these types of situations, he just has to be patient. If his numbers are whatever his numbers are, so be it. But just be willing as everybody plays this soft zone against him to take those types of throws. Second and one, just short of midfield. Maybe time to go for a big one here. Oh, instead, they hand it to a dive pick up the first down and makes it a pretty big one down to the 40 yard line where Derek Johnson drags him down after a 10 yard scamper. Good block that time by tight end Ben Utek who's really become the blocking tight end on this team. He'll catch a ball occasionally as well but he was able to get the kick out block against Derek Johnson there and that is a significant hole and you just have to wonder now how much longer the Chiefs are going to hold up. I'm telling you this is a, a remarkable performance by them thus far. But short of Peyton throwing him another one, you know, they've been on the field. The time of possession has to be incredibly lopsided here. 20 first downs for Indy, none for Kansas City, but only nine points for the Colts as Dominique Rhodes gets the call. Larry Johnson has been a non-factor in today's game when the conventional wisdom was he would pound that weak Colts rush defense. Time of possession, 27 to 10. I don't even think he's broken a sweat, has he? It looks like <laughs> it looks like he just came out on the field. And it looks like Derek Johnson shaking up on the play for the Chiefs. Injury timeout. Derek Johnson on the sideline with uh, cramps in his left leg, the former Texas All-American Buckus Award winner. I guess he has cramps. They've been out there the whole time. Maybe they should put Larry Johnson in a linebacker. <laughs> At this rate, they're going to need some extra troops. The third quarter has belonged to Indianapolis during the regular season. They haven't scored in the third yet today. They have a 9 nothing lead. Here's Joseph for no, Dominique Rhodes. To the outside in a decent game before Law and Fox make the tackle. Kieran Fox came in to replace Johnson at that outside linebacker for Kansas City. And I think Peyton Manning went in at halftime and basically had a conversation with himself and just said, you know what? Okay, I, I'm not going to be a hero out here, obviously, today, but I'm not going to cross my team. I haven't seen one throw down the field yet. Everything has been a dink on this entire drive here. And this has been methodical dismantling so far on this one. And Peyton Manning saying that he likes to know from the sideline if they had a chance to go for it on fourth down when he makes that third down call. He made the right call there as a dive pounds ahead for the first down. And there you come up again with another player down now for the Kansas City Chiefs. That's Jimmy Wilkerson who made the tackle. And another injury timeout in a 9 0 game. Jimmy Wilkerson walking gingerly off the field. And right on the, the tail end of this play, you're going to see his knee bend around right there and get caught in a very awkward position. And the Kansas City defense is going to be in an awkward position now because he is a significant backup to try and get some of these front line guys. 
a bit of a breather. Ryan Sims replaced him. Adai kept his balance and takes it to the 13-yard line. And Tom, right now in the ball game, the Indianapolis Colts have 22 first downs. The Kansas City Chiefs have 21 yards. It is 300 and now probably 50 to 21 yards. Hey, this is unbelievable. Have you ever seen things no, like that? No, not, not again with a defense in the Indianapolis Colts that is historically bad. And Joseph Adai now with 101 yards rushing. This is the 11th play of the Indy Drive, and it's Adai again using his blockers ripped down at the five-yard line. It'll be close to another first down. Boy, for a young running back, that was a very patient run. Standing there, waiting for the blocking, cutting it all the way back. Then when he finally sees the crease, lowering his head, taking it up the field. They found one. They, they lost a good one in Edger and James, but it was very well thought out. They knew that last year in the draft, it was a strong draft for running backs, and that's a big part of why they made that decision. Go to him again. You can only take so many body shots before you eventually keel over. That time on the backside, Ben Utek simply took his guy and drove him all the way past the hole. That was a complete washout. That's an exhausted defense who finally has come to the realization that they just can't play every snap out there against a, an offense like this and hold up. Their offense has given them nothing, and the defense has taken the brunt of the punishment. Then a Terry for the extra points, and it is good. The first touchdown of the game comes with 4.14 left in the third quarter. Joseph Adai scores, and Indy up 16-0. Adai playing his first postseason game. The rookie from the Bayou Bengals of LSU with a six-yard touchdown run. He was the workhorse of that drive, and now Trent Green and the Chiefs have an uphill battle and Heward still continues to pace the sideline he has not warmed up and as bad as it has been it is still not too late to get Larry Johnson involved I think at this point you now have to go to your superstar players and that being Larry Johnson and that being Tony Gonzalez who basically has been a non-factor so far in this ball game it's just 16 nothing there's plenty of time to get something going Terry's kick. Dante Hall will take it on the bounce. No, you'll see it go out of bounds. Heads up move by Dante Hall, who is one of six NFL players with over 10,000 kick return yards, six kickoff return touchdowns, and five punt return touchdowns. Well, a new era in golf is coming, a new format, a playoff-like atmosphere, the FedEx Cup. The PGA Tour has a new format. There'll be a season-long point system. They'll narrow it down to the top 30 money winners, and then the winner of the FedEx Cup, they'll play for $10 million. That's $10 million yeah. to the winner. 21 plays from scrimmage for Kansas City, netted 21 yards. Pass to Dante Hall. Got about five yards before Antoine Bethay stood him up. Listen to this. Kansas City has three interception returns for 55 yards. And their offense has gained now about 26. Well, get Ty Law out there. He's the only guy that can gain any yardage on the field. He has to be frustrated. He's done his job, as has the Kansas City defense as a unit. Just been worn down by that long... Indianapolis drive on the last possession by the Colts. They need the offense to do something desperately. First first down of the game. Tony Gonzalez, the big tight end, on the catch from Trent Green. And that's what it's going to have to be because right now they can't protect, but you can't leave Tony Gonzalez in there to block. You know, pick your poison here. So now Trent Green's going to have to throw it. It's going to have to be just like that, a la Joe Montana. Hit that fifth step and get it out of there. Now they try to get Larry Johnson untracked. He moves the pile ahead to the 45-yard line. Four-yard gain when not much was there. 
with Booger McFarland. McFarland making the stop for Indy. Oh, is Booger McFarland telling us about when uh, they recruited him at Tennessee? He said they started talking to me about hiking that ball between my legs, and I got up out of there. I was gone. <laughs> and went to LSU. He said he really didn't care where he went. He wasn't particularly an LSU fan. He just wanted to escape Winsboro, Louisiana, his hometown, about 8,000 people, where he made uh, a lot of money chopping wood. That was the only way he could survive. Look at the catch made by Chris Wilson, another tight end, and he takes it to the 20-yard line. Went upstairs to grab it from Green, 25 yards. There we go. The quick release once again. Hit your back step. Now you're starting to work against the linebackers. What the Chiefs have done now is they've begun to spread their formations out and trying to get some isolation down the field. They have big tight ends. And one of the things Trent Green thought they could do was throw the ball up high to their tight ends and allow them to get up and make that catch. Trent Green's hit all three of his attempts. This drive, they're at the 21. Pressure steps up, delivers a strike to Johnson, and Johnson broke one tackle, then pounded down just short of the first down by Gary Brackett. Well, Trent Green really made this play by stepping up. It looked like he was about to take a sack here. He steps up, barely misses Robert Mathis, and gets the thing flipped out. Now they've gone up and down the field now, throwing the ball. That's Larry Johnson, Sr. Larry uh, Jr.'s father, of course, who is a defensive line coach at Penn State, Larry's alma mater. Here he is. Looked like uh, Brackett made it, the tackle along with help from Sanders. Bob Sanders returning to the defense for the Colts after only playing in four games in the regular season due to an knee injury. And Bob Sanders is going to come sprinting up out of the secondary. I think this is him right here. And as we've seen him do so many times, he just has a knack of going into the hole and finding a way to make the hit only five foot eight and yet game after game when he can stay healthy he makes big plays against the run play action fake Trent Green has it complete to Wilson Chris Wilson tackled by Harper the first to hit him Boy, and a good hit out there by Nick Harper. What we're seeing, and a big difference in this ball game today, and what we've seen out of the Colts in the past, is simply that that they've been tackling and getting guys on the ground. And in the past, we have just seen missed tackles. And to be honest, Bob Sanders being back has been a big part of that. So many uh, Colt defenders talking about their missed tackles this season being the problem. Final seconds here of the third quarter. Play action fake again. Trent Green to the end zone, and it is Gonzalez for the touchdown. Well, after the long Rip Van Winkle sleep of the Chiefs offense, they finally come alive on this drive and they'll line up to go for two. And really, it was pretty good coverage on the outside, but you've got a big body and Tony Gonzalez out there working against Marlon Jackson, who had really good coverage, actually held a little bit on the back end of that play. And now the Kansas City Chiefs are going to go to two and try and cut this to a one possession game. High formation. Chris Wilson now leaves the fullback spot, lines up to the right, and an empty backfield as Johnson goes in motion. Green, short drop, fires to Wilson for the two point conversion. And suddenly, what a dramatic turnaround for the Kansas City offense. Herm Edwards and the Chiefs are still alive. And for the most part, it was the tight ends on this drive. It was quick throws by Trent Green. It was work to Chris Wilson. It was work to Tony Gonzalez. And when you get those big body guys out there, not only do they make the catches for you in traffic, but they can turn it up and score. And a beautiful drive by wow. Trent Green. Six for six on that drive for the Chiefs. Well, I guess they would finally had enough over there on the sideline as well. Remarkable turnaround for a team that had simply slumbered for wow. two and a half quarters. Absolutely. But that's exactly what Herm Edwards was talking about. And he said, that's the reason I go to Trent Green. Remember, this is a guy that has had 
three times in his career over 4,000 yards passing and it's been a tough transition for him to go to this running first offense and they've completely come in. Herm Edwards came in and he said I am not going to put my defense in these kinds of situations anymore where we're simply slinging it all over the park and they're out there forever. We're going to run the ball. We're going to play power football. We're going to give our defense a chance to rest. Not today but give our defense a chance to rest and so far the Chiefs have been more of a balanced offense and defense than what they've been during the Dick Vermeil era. Six for six on the drive as Green utilized the quarterback's best friend, the tight end. Wilkins takes the Tines kickoff. Really great free, but tackled short of the 30 yard line as time runs out. Well, almost one second left. You know, the one play that we did not talk about that was so significant on that drive was the kickoff out of bounds gave them the ball at the 40 yard right. line some good starting field position and all of a sudden everything seemed to open up from there. Well, Trent Green said he wasn't going to play this game looking over his shoulder for a quick hook from Herm Edwards and given a chance to stay on the field he produced on that last drive six for six two point conversion. And back in the game and hopefully a shot of adrenaline for this defense that had to have just about given up on their offensive mates. Rhodes dodging and darting to the 35 yard line upended there by Derek Johnson that brings the third quarter to a close. Tony Gonzalez big on that touchdown drive at the end of three at 16 eight Colts. Trent Green directed the touchdown drive back after this from your local station. Two of his first eight attempts for two yards but on that last drive hit all six including the touchdown pass and then threw a two point conversion pass that was good. The time Manning goes with a double count and I think got him to show a blitz and now the Chiefs had to back out of it. Now here they come. First play of the fourth quarter is a strike to Moorhead. Aaron Moorhead with his second catch of the day. Tackled by Walls. A game of 10. And a first down Indianapolis. That time Patrick Sertan was coming on a blitz. And Peyton Manning went with the double count. And when he did that, he got the linebackers to flinch and show the blitz just before the snap of the ball. Well, it all happened just a little bit before that, but basically Peyton Manning knew where the blitz was coming, threw it right in behind Sertan there. Ty Law telling us uh, yesterday that Peyton Manning was the best in the game. When he knows what you're going to do, he can just carve you up. Play action fake. One pump. And then deliver underneath to Rhodes. They'll mark it just short of the first down, I think. Derek Johnson, who is back on the field after having cramps earlier, makes the stop. Again you go off the stretch and you say OK why do we constantly run the stretch play because the play action is such a big part of it and that's really what Gunther Cunningham was so afraid of he said if we allow them to get their running game going then they can go play action off of that and our linebackers are absolutely dead there's no way you can react run and get back and cover the pass against this team. Rhodes was the eighth different receiver to catch a pass from Peyton Manning today that time he hauls it on the ground and picks up the first. We've already seen a couple of the Kansas City Chiefs defenders going off with cramps. Derek Johnson has during the changeover of the quarter. Kavika Mitchell was on the ground and he had cramps in his legs. And so Kansas City is trying to fight through it. But this is what happens. Anytime that you're on the field this long, inevitably in the fourth quarter, you start to wear down. And obviously, Kansas City has been out there a lot longer. Conversely, the Colts defense is absolutely fresh. So at least against the run, they should be pretty good. Indianapolis unbeaten at home this season. In fact, Kansas City has never won here at the RCA Dome as Manning again finds Rhodes. Puts on a little move and scoots inside the 30 yard line before Mitchell can finally get him. 15 yards. One of the strengths of Peyton Manning is that his feet just never stop moving. He's always in a position to make a throw and his belief is that as long as they're moving he can find a balance point to make a throw. But I don't think Tom I've ever seen a game in which Manning has thrown more to the backs than he has in this one. I mean he has just basically come out and said I am not taking the shots. There have been a few guys down the field where he could have tried to force it and he hasn't at all this entire half. Always hear coaches say uh, don't have happy feet but in his case it's a positive because he never gets out of the balance to throw the football. 
Joseph Adai has returned to the lineup. Russell down by Greg Wesley and others. Adai took a little shot on that one, and that was from Greg Wesley. What Ty Law tell us about Greg Wesley? said, if you're going in for a tackle, you better get there soon, because if Wesley hits you, you're in big trouble. So he doesn't care who he hits, but he's hitting somebody. Just to, anything's in his way. So these hits can really electrify you, and I'm sure Larry Johnson would like to electrify this Chiefs team a little bit, too. Larry Johnson, one that likes to deliver hits as well from the offensive side of the football, but he has not had a big day today. The Colts stack their defense to stop him. They've done a good job on him. Manning again dancing around until he finds Clark. There's another example of the happy feet going, going, going until he finds the receiver for 17 yards. And now you're starting to see some mistakes come out. And Peyton Manning's going to go out. There you go. What, you know those, those uh, games in the arcade? You ever see the kids <laughs> play those things where you play the music with right. your feet and you're dancing all around? Peyton Manning would be good at that game. He'd have that one down. And that time, Jared Allen tried to use an inside stun. He got caught and gave Peyton too much time and allowed him to work down the field of Clark. Peyton has hit all eight of his pass attempts since his last interception. Eight for eight, 144 yards. And to a die. Joseph to die to the five-yard line. Tom Moore giving uh, Peyton Manning the option to pound it. Dylan Gandy's going to come across on the trap block right here to set this thing up. Two tackles wide. You don't have that offset nose that time from Kansas City, which set that play up perfectly. My guess is that Peyton Manning probably audible to that one. Adai, the injured player, will take a timeout. Somebody's NFL wildcard playoff brought to you by Sprint. Be a better fan with NFL Mobile only from Sprint. Power up by Diet Pepsi. Live NFL, drink Diet Pepsi. And by McDonald's. Joseph Adai shaken up, goes to the sideline. Dominique Rhodes replaces him. Peyton Manning in the shotgun. Pumps once, delivers to the end zone. Caught for the touchdown by Reggie Wayne. There's a flag down on the play, but I think it's going to be illegal contact by Patrick Sertan. Or maybe a hold. Peyton Manning he goes to the double move he goes to the pump fake Sertan tries to jump underneath that and then really had no choice at that point than to try and hold Reggie Wayne before he got behind him he knew at the moment of the pump fake when the ball didn't come out of Manning's hands that it was over and it extra point splits the uprights Kansas City marches down the field scores a touchdown Tony Dungy and the Colts answer with one of their own Peyton Manning, the pump fake, the delivery. Reggie Wayne goes up top, and the Colts have a touchdown and go up 23-8. Down 23-8. Peyton Manning getting his first touchdown pass of the game with 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And Trent Green will soon return for the Chiefs after Vinatieri kicks it off. There's the scoring drive. Reggie Wayne with the payoff. And a Terry's kick to Dante Hall at the goal line. Sit up and taken down. Special teams have not been a sparkling area for the Colts this season, but they look good today. And Kelvin Hayden made a nice play on that one. Go back to the master of the pump fake here. The little dip there was enough to get Patrick Sertan to jump. You'll see Sertan right here. He is looking straight back at Peyton Manning. And the reason the Chiefs defensive backs and corners have been so susceptible to double moves is when they get in that situation, they don't watch the receiver, they watch the quarterback. Peyton Manning knew that. He knew in certain three-step drops he could get him to bite, took advantage on the goal line there. Chiefs start from the 18. Green complete to Johnson out of the backfield. Nice shoestring tackle made there to prevent Larry Johnson from getting rolled in by Jason David. 
And we've seen it all day long. The difference in this Colts team today has been their tackling. And in particular, tackling out of their secondary. Bob Sanders has clearly given them a lift, but we've seen Nick Harper, we've seen Jason David, we've seen Marlon Jackson make big hits down there, and they're not allowing those secondary runs where they've been bouncing off the way they have been all season. Green finds Gonzalez again in the center. He used those tight ends so effectively on the touchdown drive by Kansas City, and Gonzalez grabs that one. For both teams combined through the first 14 possessions, no touchdowns. In the last three, we've had three TDs. Well, after a first quarter of leaving Tony Gonzalez in the block, now they're getting him out and just doing basically what Peyton Manning has been doing to them, taking those quick dump-off routes and letting him turn his big body up the field and get a first down. But they desperately need to make this one. I think this has got to be four-down territory right here. Third down in the yard. Larry Johnson. Ducks one way, pounds ahead the other way, 30-yard line, first down, Chiefs. Rob Morris got the big man down. I'm not so sure Chris Terry right here doesn't get a bit of a hold. Just as Larry Johnson makes that cut, he sort of takes Josh Thomas and spins him out of the hole. But now Larry Johnson, as the clock continues to tick, and Tom Edwards knew, he said, this is the position you don't want to be against this team because their pass rushers can take over a game. He said this is a defense, the Colts defense, built for the pass rush. Green steps up, finds Johnson. Mary Johnson broke out of one tackle, picks up another Chiefs first down, 43-yard line. Oh, that time Jordan Black, who got beat earlier in the game for a sack when Freeney went underneath him, this time Black just squished him. <laughs> so he just bugged him, you know, just sort of squished him in the ground. Yeah. Is that a football term? I don't squish. I like it. Okay. I didn't see any uh, funny stuff squishing out, but. Nowhere to go for Bennett as Bennett comes in. Michael Bennett to spell Larry Johnson and may makes a yard. You know that you're in one of those situations against a typical team where you say well we're, we're not out of this and we don't need to go the hurry up but you can't count on the fact that Peyton Manning won't take it down the field again so you in my opinion the Chiefs have to crank this up a little bit I mean they're going to have to score at least twice and possibly three times before this game's over and they keep going back to the huddle green with a nice job of dodging the rush and found Hall at midfield. He's short of the first down, spun to the turf by Nick Harper. We're heading inside of seven minutes now. And for Herm Edwards and the guys, yeah, they're moving the ball, but they're doing it in an expensive way against the clock. But again, I think that now as a play caller, you can look at this, but you don't have to convert this third down because you've got to go for it on fourth down if you don't. So conceivably, you could go run run here. Larry Johnson back in the game. He's been held to 32 yards on 13 carries. Empty backfield and a flag down. Both start. Number 54 in the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Brian Waters with a false start. And one of the surprises for me in this ball game has been that the interior three of the Kansas City Chiefs have not been able to dominate. Brian Waters, Casey Wigman, and Will Shields are probably the best three interior offensive linemen in the game. And basically, they've been dominated, as have the rest of the Chiefs line in this one. Shields starting for the 224th consecutive time today, second only to Brett Favre. Trent Green pumps once down the sideline, picked off, intercepted by Bob Sanders down the sideline, and Sanders out of bounds after the interception. There are some guys on a football team that just emotionally charge you, and Bob Sanders is one of those guys. Sanders didn't go for any part of that pump fake. The ball was severely underthrown, and Sanders got it. Dollar 23-8, Indianapolis. Trent Green had hit nine straight before that last interception, so the Colts take over. First turnover by the Chiefs in the game. Indy's turned it over three times. Three Peyton Manning interceptions. Rhodes... 
for the one yard gain. Let's go back to the interception. Bob Sanders right back here is going to come off of the pump fake, not be fooled at all. Eddie Kennison actually was really open on this play. He had some separation, but it was Booger McFarlane who got pressure on Trent Green and forced him to throw it before he wanted to after the pump fake. He just couldn't follow through. The ball sailed on him and was picked off by Sanders. Timeout, Kansas City. Downtown Indianapolis, 23 to 8. Looks like the Christmas decorations are still up, maybe in anticipation of a Colts victory today. Second down, Indianapolis, just short of their own 45 yard line. Manning saw Kendrell Bell coming up on the end of the line of scrimmage. Check to the stretch play away. Nice job by Manning right there. Rhodes to midfield. And of course, this is the first of two on Wild Card Saturday here on NBC. And Al Michaels and John Madden standing by in Seattle as the Cowboys take on the Seahawks. That'll be coming up next on these NBC stations as Wild Card Saturday continues. And Kansas City has taken another timeout. They have one timeout left. Well, the two best friends squaring off today, Tony Dungy and Herm Edwards, who go all the way back to their playing days as they played in the Hula Bowl. And Herm Edwards got the only laugh he's had much today was uh, saying that Tony Dungy finally paid for dinner when they went out with Lovey Smith and their families last night. Finally got Tony to pay. Do you think that Eric Mangini and Bill Belichick would be going out to dinner tonight? <laughs> I just kind of well, have <laughs> trouble picturing that one. I don't know. I'd have a food taster of this. <laughs> Yeah, but they're great friends and they cheer for each other and obviously common bonds as they all dreamed one day that they would have a chance to be head coaches. They're all head coaches and they're all in the playoffs. All a great job. All successful. They're all great guys. Yeah. Too. And it, it, it's painful, you know, in a way for, for Edwards and Dungy to play each other because as much as they want to win, and obviously they do, they know that ultimately it'll cause pain to their best friend and it's probably tougher on the wives than it is even on the on the head coaches. Timeout taken by Indianapolis that time. Well, Peyton Manning uh, had a rough start, but it looks like he's going to advance in the playoffs, still trying to erase that playoff mystique. And of course, Peyton got an early start with his dad, Archie, and uh, we knew early on that maybe he was going to be a quarterback. Peyton, who's your favorite football player, then? My dad. Your dad's your favorite football player, too? Well, you're on the right track. You're going to be a football player when you grow up? Mm hmm. There he goes. You think that's where the horse collar rule came from? That's the horse collar psych right there. You know, he went, went to the complaint and then picked up the other guy's helmet and took off ran for a touchdown. Peyton's hit 30 of 38 for 268 yards today, but of course the three interceptions. As the uh, Colts continue to run to work on the clock here, and since he had that third interception, he has hit all nine of his passes. So a bittersweet seeming victory for Peyton Manning with 544 left there you see his numbers today but really a break for the Kansas City Chiefs on that one to be able to get the ball back now 544 to go and they're going to get another chance well a rough start for him Ty Law picked him off second interception and the third one was Ty Law again who has been the nemesis of Manning in the playoffs but then he found his stride hit Reggie Wayne for his first touchdown pass with about 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter and has directed the Colts offense to 23 hard earned points today. And I think he's upset about that last play call you know so much of what he does is direct this offense I think he thought he had the cheap first down there and he made the call to the run and he's probably saying I knew it was a dumb idea. Uh -oh. Smith fumbles the snap and then tosses it to a teammate but he'll be tackled at about the 35 yard line that was a Rocky Boyman the former Notre Dame player that was uh, the recipient of that toss but the uh, flags have flown everywhere obviously. Well my goodness the Kansas City Chiefs are just going to hang around till they finally have a chance at the end of that game and their defensive stand right there maybe the first of the day was key. 
Elio Tutting of a forward pass. Number 50 of the offense. That penalty will be declined. First and 10, Kansas City. There's the Golden Domer. Well, it looks like a Golden Dome, doesn't it? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> and he got the pass uh, from uh, another Notre Dame player, Hunter Smith, who fumbled the snap. Right through his hands, and so many things have gone wrong for the Colts over the years. We just have to wonder what these fans are thinking. Like, oh my goodness, this thing appeared to be so locked away, and now here we go again. Chiefs need a quick strike here. Trent Green retreats and is sacked. Dwight Freeney got him back at the 45 yard line. Well, Dwight Freeney, you can only block him so many times. That time he goes to a straight bull rush. You worry so much. Of, and Jordan Black on that time was looking for the inside move, the spin move, and Freeney just took him and drove him right back into Trent Green. Loss of eight, second and 18. Green in trouble again. And will be taken down again. McFarland got him. And Booger McFarland has had a monster game out here today. That time, Dwight Freeney got close, got the pressure, forced Trent Green to step up, and Booger just never stopped playing. Brian Waters let up. Draw well, screen pass in the face of all that pressure, and Larry Johnson picking his way forward behind the blockers. Goes inside the 40-yard line. It's short of, well short of the first down, so Brock and Brackett made sure on the tackle. And they'll have to go for it on fourth down. No question about it, and now they're in the hurry-up mode. Which they, they should have done earlier. No question. And now here they come, and here comes Freeney, and here comes Mathis. Green steps up, buys some time, finds an open receiver. It's Bennett, and Bennett takes it down, apparently for a first down. That would be a clutch conversion, and it is by Kansas City. Wow. Green, stepping up, made the play. And it looked like Daryl Reed coming in late. Actually, the hit drove him for the first down. 12-yard gain. Drive still alive for the Chiefs. Green buried again. They can't block him. Fumble recovered by Indianapolis. Yeah. Herm said the same thing I just did. We can't block him. That time they even got a chip on the outside. They end up with two guys trying to block one. And it was Bo Schobel who came out there. It was Robert Mathis who came from the other side. And they just had a meeting at the quarterback. <laughs> Mathis and Schobel. The ball popped out. Trent Green tried to fall right down on it. They scrambled for it. And Indianapolis came up with it. And for the Indianapolis Colts, you have to say that this is a very exciting moment for them because their defense is winning a football game. And even though Peyton Manning's had a bad game out there today for the most part, or at least early on, throwing all the interceptions, the defense has stepped up and made plays. And I didn't think that was possible. I didn't think they could shut down this running game of the Kansas City Chiefs the way they did. Bob Sanders has certainly given them a lift. And when the Chiefs had to throw it, they had no chance to block this pressure. The defense of the Colts kept them in it until the offense could get untracked. And Dominique Rhodes carries there. Kansas City has no timeouts remaining. As the clock ticks down inside four minutes. And just so you don't think we're lying to you, the Colts run defense this year <laughs> allows 173 yards rushing per game. The next closest is 145. That's St. Louis. It's been 19 years since any team's allowed so many yards rushing per game, all the way back to the 87 Falcons. The Colts were the first team in 22 years that allowed at least 100 yards rushing in every game. It goes on and on, and yet today they have come out, they've been emotional, and they've played great. Allowed 44 rushing yards to one of the best in the business, Larry Johnson, second leading rusher on the season in the NFL, who led the league in carries. And has been neutralized by the Colts defense today. Rhodes stopped by Knight. As we're inside three minutes now. And don't you think as the Colts get set to go to Baltimore, don't you think the play of their defense will give them a big lift? Oh, there's no question about it. I mean, how many times could Peyton Manning have said, you know, we just have to play conservatively on offense because our defense is going to win this game. 
You know, it just it just hasn't happened with this franchise. And now emotionally, I don't know if it's Bob Sanders. I don't know exactly why it was. But this team from the very first half when Larry Johnson tried to come out and run the football, the Colts have been all over. Rhodes again. Tackled by Wesley. And the Chiefs can't stop the clock. It'll tick down to the two-minute warning. Larry Johnson held in check today. Heward on the sideline. Never got the call from Herm Edwards. Trent Green had a spotty afternoon. Heward never got in. Two-minute warning in Indy. In the foreground in downtown Indianapolis. And our wild card doubleheader continues next from Seattle. As we move to the NFC and the Cowboys take on the Seahawks with Al Michaels, John Madden, and Andrea Kramer standing by for the call coming up next here on NBC. And uh, 23 to 8, no timeouts left and two minutes on the clock. If Indianapolis holds on, they will take on the Baltimore Ravens in the divisional playoffs next weekend. And I have to think that Bill Belichick, a reason he was playing so hard in that game last week against the Titans was that He's thinking in the back of his mind, you know, it may well come down to the Colts and the Patriots one more time. And I sure would like to be the three seed instead of the four seed. So in case that scenario happens, they have to come here as opposed to going back inside that dome and trying to win. Because one of the problems you have is on this turf and with this crowd, the two pass rushers on the outside for the Colts are almost unstoppable because those tackles just can't hear the snap count. Fourth down and... Smith handles the snap. Low line drive punt. Hall takes on the fly. Dante Hall. Ooh, slam to the turf at the 30 yard line. And how appropriate. What an exclamation mark. Taiwan Hagler. Because the special teams, the two coverage units, kickoff and punt have been so poor. And today, they're terrific. The defense can't stop the run. And today, they're terrific. Perfect exclamation point. Well, I think as the Colts hope to advance in the playoffs, that's the wild card, the way that the unforeseen members of the team have played today. The defense, the rush defense, and the special teams, as you said, Chris. Trent Green whips it downfield into a crowd. Lucky that wasn't picked off, intended for Dante Hall. So the Colts uh, will face that powerful Ravens defense next weekend. Here's what happened uh, in the regular season. They didn't play each other, but Indianapolis scoring 27 points per game, tied for second in the NFL, while well, the Ravens allowed only less than 13. So it will be another one of those intriguing matchups in Baltimore. Barring a Kansas City miracle. Here's Hall ducking out of bounds in front of Nick Harper. Stops the clock at 136. And that Baltimore defense is as good as I've seen. In my opinion, this season, they are the best defense. Obviously, San Diego. There's some other teams that have really good defense as well. New England set a record this year for the fewest points that franchise has allowed. So there is going to be statements made by defenses around the NFL during the playoffs. I just didn't think it was going to come from the Colts. <laughs> dropped. Gonzalez has dropped a couple today. And normally he is one of the most sure-handed receivers in the NFL. 73 catches in the regular season was second among NFL tight ends. You know, and it's been one of those kind of days. But I have to tell you that, in my opinion, this game was won right up front. The guys that have been taking a lot of heat trying to stop the run, Booger McFarland, Raheem Brock, even Robert Mathis is a smaller guy that you can run at. From the first play on, they have been making plays with their pass rush and with their run defense, the best I've seen them. Fourth down. Green's pass intercepted. Bethea out of bounds after picking off Trent Green for the second time today. So the Indianapolis defense held Kansas City to no first downs, their first seven possessions. Then they gave up a touchdown and a two-point conversion. But since then, they've forced three turnovers. 
Pretty sneaky play by a rookie right there, Antoine Bethea just simply baited Trent Green into that throw. He was laying back, and Sammy Parker was the intended receiver. And if I'm not mistaken, I don't think the Kansas City Chiefs wide receivers have caught a ball today. Everything has basically been inside to the tight end. And the two starting receivers have been a total non-factor. All right, I think Dante Hall might have caught one, but the two starters did not. And you talked about the, the tone of the game. To me, it was the first series by Kansas City. Everybody in the universe knew that the Chiefs were going to try to pound Larry Johnson. He got the call on the first play from scrimmage in the game. Well, during the game, the Indianapolis defense held him to 32 yards on 13 carries. Unheard of. Well, for Peyton Manning, this is one of those days that he just has to sit back and go, wow, the rest of my teammates picked me up this time. And don't forget, uh, second game coming up, the Cowboys and the Seahawks. And in between games, we'll go back for a special edition of Football Night in America, presented by Diet Pepsi with Bob Sterling, Jerome, and Jim Mora in the studio to break down this game and a preview of the game to come. The two best friends, Tony Dungy and Herm Edwards, with an embrace. You win this thing, I'm showing up. You know, they have a deal that neither one of these guys either watch or go to the Super Bowl, but the arrangement between them is if either one of them ever makes it there, the other guys go. Tony Dungy is still alive so after a hard-fought victory over the Kansas City Chiefs. Expected that Larry Johnson there would be a key man today. He was not, thanks to the Colts' defense. And Peyton Manning, after a rocky start, got his sea legs and directed the Colts to 23 points and a 23-8 victory. Manning hitting 30 of 38. 268 yards. You know, so many times the Colts have been the one seed, the two seed, whatever the case may be. Maybe coming out of the wild card and give them a chance to get their feet settled might actually do them some good. If they had played this kind of a game against one of the top seeds, they're going home again. So now maybe they come out, they're a little sloppy out here offensively or off the charts defensively, and maybe that gives them some momentum to make it up. And some confidence that their defense can make plays. Great game by some guys. Dwight Freeney, uh, Burger McFarland was tremendous today. Bob Sanders. I thought the corners, the secondary tackled exceptionally out there today. They just look like a different football team. Yeah, Nick Harper made some plays in like one of those corner spots. And all around, it was an unexpected result from the Indy defense. And Peyton Manning finally got on track. And right now, he's with Bob Newmeyer. With Peyton Manning following this win, Peyton, first of all, the change in philosophy offensively from running the ball the short check downs is that patience maturity or taking what the defense gives you well that's kind of what it was I guess they were playing you know pass coverage most of the entire game and I uh, was some double safeties and some soft zones so the run game looks from there they really wanted to take away the deep pass for so the shorter passes were there the run game was great the offensive line did a great job of course, the defense did a great job getting us the ball. Right, the critical drive, 16-8. They come back and cut it to one score plus a two-point conversion. You drove the ball the length of the field. What was the approach on that drive? Yeah, that was critical. Anytime you're backed up in your own territory, obviously your first goal is to get it out of there, keep your defense out of the hole, and then once you get out of there, try to get the touchdown. So a lot of short passes, a lot of good runs, and a great run by Joe to finish off the drive. Can you give us any sense of what you or your teammates think or say about the critics that finally want you to Get rid of all this postseason malaise and, and do something in the playoffs. Well, you know, hey, uh, we're off to a good start, I guess. You know, we won the first one. Uh, so, you know, it's a different season. Obviously, we're going to take it one game at a time. We've got a tremendous challenge going to Baltimore next week. We'll enjoy this one tonight. Get ready for them starting tomorrow. Going to invite Tyler over to dinner one of these nights? Hey, he's a great player, but uh, it looks like the Colts, Colts won the game today. So Good luck. Appreciate it. Peyton Manning, Tom. All right, Bob. Manning, 30 of 38, 268 yards, a touchdown, but three interceptions. He did hit his last nine passes of the game. Dallas Clark caught nine passes for 103 yards, and Joseph Adai, 25 rushes, 122 yards. He caught seven passes as well as Indianapolis beats Kansas City 23 to 8 in a most unlikely victory. Yeah, but one between two good friends, and that relationship will only grow stronger as they move along. More interviews to come, and we'll have the show between games for you. That's all coming up here 
on NBC, a special edition of Football Night in America as we get you to the second game, Dallas and Seattle. So stay tuned for more on Wild Card Saturday here on NBC.